on the podcast video, people will see your head. And they, they measured it. And yeah, it, it was significantly bigger than most people in my family. I, I feel like I need to sit back from the camera now, just, just in case there's, <laughs> there are head size comparisons going on. I put him up against the wall and said, right, I need a sponsor for the podcast. And uh, you've kindly uh, said yes to this. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, like you say, I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. All right, my friend, let's do this. Well, hello and welcome to the Church Office Podcast. My name is Gavin Smith. It's a joy today to welcome you to our administration, admin and ops. We love the work of ministry behind the scenes. We love talking about it. We love working in it. And uh, it's a privilege to serve our churches. And our special guest today is Gavin Courtney from Church Street. Mate, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for calling me special as well. I enjoy that. Yeah. You are a special guest, definitely. <laughs> uh, you've been a friend of the church office for a number of years. We've chatted and developed a bit of a friendship. Um, it's a privilege to spend time with you and enjoyed my timing in Nottingham a couple of weeks ago. Mm, absolutely. It's, no, really, really great to have you up. And, uh, you know, I think... Um, I think as you and I have got to know one another over the various different times we've we've met, there's just there's so much. I think there's there's just a common heart, isn't it? Of yeah. like actually we we love church. I see that in you so deeply. Like you pour so much effort and time into just supporting churches and trying to help them uh, you know, build systems and processes that work as well as possible. Because we know that's where that's where God's kingdom can absolutely grow. Um, so yeah, no, really oh, lovely to see you uh, yeah. a few weeks ago. And, and it's funny, isn't it, how God brings people together? Because I, I as soon as I met you, because um, you, you see the brilliant software, but then you, you, you know, you meet you and you go, this guy loves the local church, loves the gospel, wants to just do everything he can to help support people in this kind of behind the scenes ministry. Mate, you make our lives as church administrators and church managers easier it is easier because we have church suite let me tell you the time and energy that is saved because we get to use your your product and um i was at a conference last week speaking to a bunch of church managers and everyone's like church suite church suite we love it we love it mm -hmm. and uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job so let me start this podcast by saying a big thank you to you and the team and the, and the numerous people behind uh, with you and working with you to to provide this product for churches is it's something else mate so uh oh thank you no, that's that's it you know we always love um hearing encouragement and i'll absolutely be certain to pass along the the praise to the rest of the team like uh, you know the reality is that there's there's you know, 25 or something like that um people who work on this day in day out and ab and pour in their heart and their energy into it because they also support and love the local church so um it's always encouraging knowing that uh, all of the hard work that goes into it is is kind of seen appreciated and it is making a kingdom impact so i love that it is make it makes a huge kingdom impact yeah it does and there's fruit all over the place and, and i know uh for our church we've we've been hugely blessed so well it's exciting to have you on mate because we've been chatting for a while um and i've persuaded gavin i put him up against the wall and said right i need a sponsor for the podcast and uh you've kindly uh said yes to this um tell us a little bit about that yeah, I mean, like you say, I had no choice. No. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not yeah. at all. No, I, I think, you know, as I have seen um, everything that goes on with the church office, I, I genuinely think it's fantastic. I think um, the systems that underpin the churches and charities that, um, that are out there spreading the gospel and supporting kind of kingdom work are they're, well, they're beautiful. They're an expression of the church. Um, and all that, you know, especially the bride of Christ. And um, but we need them to have good, good processes and a really good thought behind it. And I think that is one of the things I really, really appreciate about the church office. Like you're hosting so many great conversations on different topics. There's all the resources that you put together, um, and and actually, it's just a, a way of us saying, you know, we are we're, we're operating in kind of overlapping fields, but you're doing something slightly different. But we love. We love what you're doing. Um, we see that, we recognise that, and we just want to support it a little bit. So, um, yeah, being able to uh, sponsor the podcast is uh, is a great way of being able to to do that. Mate, it's great. So, thank you so much for uh, yeah being willing to do this, and and uh, we've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've thoroughly enjoyed being part of the podcast. I know our our numbers and listeners have grown, and the more people we interact with, they they're finding it useful and helpful. And um, and what I realise is there's just so many people. People say to me like are you going to run out of people to interview? 
Um, and I'm like, there is so much good work going on. Even if you talk to another church manager about what they're doing, it's fascinating because people are doing things slightly differently. They're doing things really well. There's a, there's a growing excellence in all kind of administration in churches. And there's a there's a recognition that we need to do this well. Um, and so to find people and to find different ministries and tools and products and things like that, it's, it's a joy. And so mm. we do hope this podcast is a blessing to you and we do you know we're, we're absolutely grateful for for gavin's support and the church sweet guys um getting behind this and sponsoring the podcast so we are we are absolutely thrilled and hopefully we can uh get some more guests on we can make the the quality better i mean there's not much you can do with this you know there's there's no <laughs> sponsorship you know that you could fit in so uh we had a bit of fun with my kids the other day they 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 thought it was um fun gav to to measure each other's heads as they okay. me dad you've got a huge head you know this on the podcast video people will see your head and they they measured it and yeah it, it was significantly bigger than most people in my family so. I, I feel like i need to sit back from the camera now just just in case there's <laughs> there are head size comparisons going on it's, uh, it, is funny. it is funny so tell us a bit about church suite then what else you you've always i know you you've always got new ideas you're working on stuff constantly in the background um you've got a heart to make this better and better and better and i absolutely know that and every time something new comes out i get excited um fill us in a little bit on the on the sort of the background what's what's happening and what are you developing and enjoying at the minute yeah there's there's loads of um loads of really exciting things kind of in the in the pipeline um but also uh, kind of concept ideas that we're, we're beginning to talk about. And I think um, I think for us, one of the biggest challenges is how do we make sure that we don't just go after you know, the new and shiny? How do we work out that balance of um, w- when we're running different projects, we kind of um, classify them under three different categories of like something that is maintenance. Mm-hmm. It's behind the scenes probably, and it's not going to, um, that a customer is never, never, never going to notice the difference um there might be an upgrade project um where actually there's existing functionality uh which we either need to change or tweak or just give it a facelift or whatever it might be Um, and then there's the the new which is um kind of um yeah new features something different um, and trying to respond to to how we see churches working and trying to find that balance between all of those is is really difficult and i think it's exactly the same in in any area of church life like you could um your your maintenance uh kind of type projects in church life might be things along the lines of thinking okay well what are our sermon series that we're doing and how are we making sure that we're always drawing people back to the deep values of our church the biblical basis on which we're founded you know your upgrade is like you know let, let's let's do something let's do let's revamp our midweek prayer meetings let's see yeah. if we can push some fresh life into it and then new is like oh we're going to run a completely different course and um, we're going to run the the prayer course we're going to run the whatever course it might yeah. be and if you find yourself only doing one of those, then um, then perhaps you need to kind of look at how can we uh, adapt and, and weave some some different kind of um, energy into that overall thing. So for us, like if we only focused on new, which is definitely a like an inclination I could be <laughs> I could be dragged towards, um, then then actually you you end up overwhelming people because yeah. for some people they just want the same thing don't they 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 bought into something at, at the point in time that they bought in and they're like please don't ever change them um so yeah so, so some one of the things that we're um putting a lot of focus into at the moment is um is is that idea of okay when a new person comes on board um on your church staff you know, change is, is you know, unavoidable like it, it's just a natural part of life um, but how is it that we could better support onboarding new users, yeah. um, both like just clarifying things within the interface, um, but also we're building out a, um, and it should launch, um, I think probably in the next couple of weeks, um, a whole new kind of training section for a user so that rather than needing to go out to our support site and find videos, actually you can you can go into your own personal training section um, and say, yeah, well, I'm, I'm working in the address book module. And then boom, right there, there's you know, 15 different training videos just yeah. taking you through all the different parts of functionality within there. Um, and so you can track your progress every time. It's going to give you a little progress bar of how yeah. far through you are you. 
Um, but then also, if it's not like a line manager, you know, if if you've got a new starter coming on board, um, as part of that onboarding process, the line manager can can see that progress that each different um, user is making as they make their way through the training videos. Um, so you can kind of encourage people, right? This week, just you know, take half an hour to to watch these videos or yeah. whatever it might be. Or, or if someone's like, oh, I just don't know how to do it, like, oh, well, actually, that's it. Looks like you haven't been watching. The videos that are provided yeah. like make some time there and just trying to work out how do we play our part so that the idea of a new person coming onto the, the church staff team um actually we're we're really supporting that as well as we possibly can because i mean even this last week i i, I saw an email come through of someone who said oh you know i've just joined the team and and the handover wasn't great and i'm i feel like i'm out of my depth in church suite there's all these things set up and i don't really yeah. know how they interact it's like ah oh, i think i think that um, what we're doing with with that training section is going to um, hopefully play a real part in smoothing some of those bits. So yeah, that that's one area that's. Um... I, I think that sounds that sounds exciting, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's great because you, you guys have done lots of like support and like one off days, haven't you? Where you've you know you can go and attend a training session with a bunch of other people, and and those have been great. We've we set our whole team up on one of those once when we first got it, and it was great, and it was a great kickstart, but. But to have the the time to give people a day to go and do it, it's getting mm. more and more challenging, isn't it, for churches? So a 20-minute, 30-minute video that they can access through the site on a specific area of the address book or or, or the planning part of planning a you know a service, that that sounds great, mate. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you know, those the, the regional train training days that we have. Uh, we have run historically we've kind of we've put those on pause um just because certainly post covid exactly like you say mm. lots and lots of people even if they are uh, you know working full time or um or maybe they're part time um lots of people have kind of adapted the way that they work around i need to do the school drop off and pick up i'll still work my full hours but i'm going to work slightly earlier i'm going to work yeah. slightly later and the yeah, idea of trying to trying to find um you know, full days for people to uh, to be able to come along to a training session um yeah we we we've basically made the intentional decision of right this this year in particular there's there's no regional training days we're pouring all of the effort that we were putting into those into building out more and more online training resources yeah. so that you can access them on demand exactly when you need them and and see if actually that is a better fit for the kind yeah. of the, the need that uh, is there so yeah it, that's an exciting and fun thing to be it's great exploring. Isn't it? and i think these things in, in a busy work environment gavin what we find is that you know we probably aren't using church street to its full potential as you guys have designed and and yet at the same time the challenge of right we don't have the time to to look into all these things continually get the training um to to you know use all the different functionality and i think yeah i, I think it's a great idea for the training platform of being able to put snippets of videos in that people can access and go right yeah a little bit of training on this a little bit more um and the fact that you're going to create some sort of tracking process is is great because you don't you don't do it every week do you so be you know you forget where you're at so actually to be able to to look and see okay yeah okay i've done four or five bits of training on this module but actually i've done nothing that's related to online giving i i need to upgrade you know upgrade my skills in that area and have a look at that so um i think that's good it it, it opens up a big conversation doesn't it about training for churches and mm -hmm. we've talked about this before haven't we that you know sending people for a day is a long gone now isn't it because people are part-time they are flexible in their hours so being able to access something online um is is really useful really helpful um are you finding those same kind of conversations with churches yeah absolutely and i think that's it feels as though those kind of conversations perhaps have accelerated or well, we're hearing a few more of them uh, more recently and i think the um you know pre-covid the idea of producing videos or whatever it is to kind of help train people felt like um, like a really big cost and a really big ask whereas everyone's kind of got used to the idea of oh someone might record something on a slightly shaky uh, mobile phone <laughs> or what have you and, yeah. um, and our, our perception of what what quality we expect from video I think has changed yeah um, and so yeah I think I think people are more open to um, 
the kind of homemade video and those type of training things than they were before. I yeah. think there's changes in like availability. How many nights a week is it? Is it fair to expect a church member to come out to and um, and how many times a year? And and I think there's lots and lots. Of, everyone's got different opinions on it, don't they? Like, yeah. I mean, what 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 would what would you say a kind of typical um, week for a church member at your church looks like in terms of they're going to go on a Sunday? Is there are there midweek courses or prayer meetings or yeah. how does their ministry training fit into what? What does that all look like for you? it's it's complicated i think we've had to change a lot over over the years i mean we used to have sort of weekly home groups that people went to and then we had um you know uh, we've got a kind of parent-led teens ministry so parents would be out with their teens on a friday so that was two nights prayer meeting would be on a monday we do some optional bible studies that people can sign up to for like a five-week block or something mm. um so you could potentially be you know, three three nights at least minimum out a week um, at a church activity of some kind, and then to fit something else into it, like a kind of get together of all the teachers for children's ministry, is is an add on, or you know, to try and pull together kind of home group leaders for a day of training, yeah, and is another add on, and so these are these are hard things, and you're realizing actually how many of us are still interacting with unbelievers as well. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah because because we're all so into what we're doing at the church and i think we we've tried to work hard so most of our groups are kind of every other week now midweek yeah and there's a huge flexibility of when they run through um and i think that frees up a lot and if people have got a real heart to pray for you know and want to pray for the church and want to go along to prayer meeting then come along to that some will come to the bible study so um it is a little bit more pick and mix probably than it has been mm. previously um but yeah, when people do come, they do engage and they are committed. So yeah, mm. so it's trying to find those right balances, isn't it? But we wouldn't yeah. have, we wouldn't have two services on a Sunday. We would just have one in the morning. Okay. And so we've got a building that can accommodate everyone. So some people are doing multiple services on a Sunday as well. Um, yeah. So I don't know what it's like for your church. Yeah, it, it's an interesting balance. We've got um, we we have three services on a sunday although they are they're, they're essentially the same broadly speaking the same service um same same talk at, at each of them so it's kind of for different people groups in some ways mm -hmm. um uh, our small groups run um run three times a month so we have a week which is okay. called gap week um so once a month all small groups are asked please don't meet on this week because then that gives that kind of th that one week a month is the thing or is the time when um when ministry training can happen because it's like you're not committed to your small group that week so you yeah. you could be committed to a you know, your yeah. part the refreshments team there's going to be a training or something like that yeah um and then there are yeah there are there are various courses that run i think most of our courses tend to run in person mm -hmm. um there are some so my, my wife runs a um like a theology course which they meet in person maybe um twice in a term but then there are um, online videos that they're watching between those points. So it's almost like yeah. you consume the content as when you can, but then there's these fixed points um, okay, when you cool. come together to talk about things. Um, but then there's, you know, with any church, there's, there's all those different things. That's like, ah, if you're going to be part of the kids ministry, um, mm -hmm. then, then you need to do some kind of safeguarding training. And so, uh, but, but almost like waiting to do safeguarding training once a year or twice a year, yeah. Um, yeah. you, you want to get some of that stuff straight yeah. into people's hands don't you and it's yeah, you it, those things along with you know perhaps other things like um some some basic teaching on the values of the church um yeah. this is this is our approach to ministry this is how we do prayer ministry or this is how we approach reading the bible and understanding it yeah um, some of those things you want those those resources to be immediately available when someone starts attending um, yeah. as part of their journey of becoming a member don't you so it's yeah. kind of like how do we how do we navigate this this world of i want it right now but also you have to wait for it and it, like it's, yeah. it's a really interesting dynamic isn't it it really is and i think what you're saying about the training platform if there was if there was a possibility of uploading your own videos into some so one of the things that we identified straight away was when when a new member comes and they've signed up to church suite they start getting the communication um they've got a desire to serve in kids ministry 
And so there's this huge gap then of when they can do it. So they're waiting for the safeguarding training to come around. Mm. They're waiting for the children's ministry next meeting to happen. And so we move that online to a site called Moodle. And it, mm. I guess it's like a kind of educational site. And we say to people, right, there's a gap between when you can get a DBS and when you can actually get on the rotor. In that gap, we want you to jump onto this. We'll give you a username. And again, a similar kind of process to what you're saying. We go on and we expect them to go and do the safeguarding training, go and hear about how to download the curriculum, how to teach a curriculum. We've created videos for all those different things. And like you say, you can track them behind the scenes of what people mm -hmm. have done. And there's some great governance things that happen. So we'll email you when somebody's completed, the, like there's a little short test for safeguarding. Have you yep. engaged with the content? Do you understand what, what's expected from you as a worker? And then it'll email the office. But then we, what we do then is we create a tag on Christ on Church Suite to say that they've they've completed the training, they've got a DBS in place, the yep. date happens. Um, but we're using the two two systems, you know. Mm. To, and I think if there was a possibility of combining that, mm. I mean, we could probably pay something like three hundred and fifty pounds a year for Moodle to have yeah. this site, you know. But then we're still having to do the the transfer of information across to church Street because that provides a real good governance structure for us so we can quickly go on yeah. find a member find what information we have you know in terms of what training they've done what teams they're serving in it, it's all there so to combine it all together mate sign me up i'm there <laughs> spend 350 pounds to do it um, yeah well that's I, what I, we're I saying think, at the minute yeah and i think that there is I think there's 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 kind of growing thoughts that we've got around all of that and just trying yeah. to work out okay so how do we how do we build all the the relevant things into that because you there are some things like um safeguarding it's like actually that is a course that I want you to go systematically yeah. through it yeah. and I want to track that and I need to know like I have a I have a safeguarding requirement to yeah. know that you've you've gone through that process right. yeah um whereas you could set up a values course, um, mm -hmm. which is actually more about I'm gonna we're gonna talk through some of the different values within our church, which it, it it's kind of set up in a similar way. But your requirement for tracking, it's more about oh no, we we want you to know about that yeah, yeah, about yeah. this, yeah. Um, and it, it's trying to work out how can you how can you build something that is both soft and yeah. and and welcoming, but also is rigid and and kind of gives you that. Yes, we we know that you've completed this exact track, yeah. Um, and yeah, that that's our problem to solve. Um, yeah, I think you can solve it, mate. Because this that would that would be great. I just think things <laughs> like new members courses and things like that. Like you're talking about values, you know, we we probably do a new members course every every I don't know three times a year, twice a year, depending on mm. the, the demand. It's it's never enough, but but to fit another evening in or a or, or a pre meeting on a Sunday. It's mm. quite a lot, but but actually people get quite frustrated with it because they it would be lovely for them to sit and watch something because after mm. four videos about four values of the church, um, what are our you know our non-negotiables, what are our priorities for us as a church, to sit and listen to that, you'll get a really good idea as to actually whether this is a church you really want to join. And I yeah. think it would save everyone time in that sense and then have some in-person meetings and process after that. But mm. yeah, we're looking at that thinking if we, if we had the the capacity to do that in one place, um, it would be, it would be useful. Yeah. Mm. It's all about trying to find, you know, the right balance between kind of relational and transactional, isn't it? Like yeah. we want like something like new members, absolutely. Like that is deeply yeah. relational. However, there is a transactional element of yeah. we need to tell you this stuff yeah. so that you so that we can relate as well as possible. Mm. Um, and um, I guess it, it it's trying to find you know, what is that kind of radical middle ground between those two of if everything's super relational, well, it's going to run infrequently and it's going to be it's going to place a lot of relational demands on people. And some people are introverts and actually yeah. sitting in a room three <laughs> weeks in a row for two hours to hear about they're like that's 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 a real that's a cost for that's a big ask isn't it yeah yeah whereas actually if you've got something that's transactional which is much more of a well watch these videos and once you've watched them you tick a box and you're now a yeah. member of the church like, no we don't want to be like that either <laughs> um it, it, it's it's a real kind of interesting balance to find somewhere in in that middle ground yeah. isn't there 
Yeah, it really does, doesn't it? And again, a lot of this relates to the leadership of the church, doesn't it? The the type yeah. of leaders you've got, the style that you've got. Um, you know, you do need to think through what what would work for you. You know, if you're a church of 50 or 100, you can mm-hmm. do the relational thing so much easier. If you're a church of 500, again, it's harder and harder to, to work those things through. Um, yeah. And everyone, every ministry lead wants to do these kind of review checkups training prayer together they equipping you know they all want to do that and if you're doing that across 10 ministries or something it's it yeah. does clog up the calendar doesn't it so um definitely definitely uh, i think i think this, this stuff on training is great but i guess there's a whole load of issues for you in terms of like hosting videos on site and there, i bet there's some complications technically for you to do all of this not impossible yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think you know probably what we would end up doing is saying, well, um, solving the problem of hosting video that's that's not that's been solved. Yeah. That's been solved by YouTube. That's been by, solved by Vimeo. Yeah. That's been solved by by others out there. And so actually, what we would probably do is um, we would just make it so that it's really easy to link a video from yeah. one of those those known awesome. established mega services. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, we just link into that um, and, and provide all of the other tooling and interface around that, um, yeah. which is effectively how we have built the uh, the training um, section that, that yeah. we'll be rolling out for our users uh, in the coming weeks. We just host all of our videos on Vimeo yeah. um, because it, it's inexpensive and they are a really solid known entity with great privacy concerns and all those kind of things uh, built in. So, um, yeah, it, it is always it's always about like what what's our problem to solve? Yeah. Is it is that our problem to solve now, or is that a problem to solve in in yeah. the future? Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of, that's a lot of fun trying to work out all these different things. Oh, it's great, mate, and and yeah, if if we can do more to support it, I'd love to. But I, I think yeah, the, the whole thing around training. I mean, we're we're talking about things here that are kind of administrative things, aren't they? Getting people into service and and while they're in it, you know, how we manage and care for people. But in terms of the whole thing about then discipleship you know, like year out programs or, or staff training. Again, it's a, it's another level, isn't it? And it's another, you know, area to, to chat more about. But um, I, I think you guys are onto something there, mate. I think, you know, we've we've seen it. We've tried to solve it with with um, with Moodle and it works to some extent, but it doesn't have a it's not particularly user friendly. It's not particularly easy for us to upload courses mm. and do stuff. It doesn't have the same kind of navigation um mm. which we would and, we've typically enjoyed with other things you know yeah and and whilst whilst you know some of the um the idea of this kind of training is is about it, it is about safeguarding training or newcomer training yeah. or whatever that might be i think i we can i could also see a way that um these types of um you've got things like the alpha course you've got the mm-hmm. prayer course the marriage course you've got yeah. content from care for the family you've got all sorts of resources yeah. out there which Sometimes you might want um, your small groups to be running, your home groups to be running. Um, some, like, you know, some churches actually will say, "No, we want all home groups to follow the same curriculum." Yeah, yeah. So yeah. actually, you, you record a, you know, the, the senior pastor who are teaching, whatever it might be, records a five-minute video to set up the conversations yeah. in home group that night, and and yeah. that could be a way of delivering the content, mm-hmm. um, which becomes available to small. I, I really do think there's. I think we're in a really interesting time. I'm excited yeah. about um, I'm about the ideas. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just a question of is is now the time for us to, to, to explore it? Was it? There's so much application, isn't there? There is really yeah. is. Um, one of the other things that I was going to chat to you, Gav, about was um, when I've gone around churches. You know, we talk about training. The other thing that that comes up is when there's congregational churches and there's voting and there's a certain time that people have to send out minutes and and agendas and things like that and we've been talking to people and saying well actually you can use church suite for some of this stuff and it will track communication and and that's really useful um but it it made me think actually i wonder if there are churches that are in those situations where they've got a great uh, degree of governance to in their annual meetings um that how they could how you know people are kind of adapting church suite to to provide some of those services have you guys thought any of of those kind of areas um the church Week could develop into oh developing into well um great question like voting Probably. even people like voting well, members and things like well, that no, yeah so, so i know for a fact that um a lot of a lot of churches will use our forms feature for voting yeah. 
because you can you can set up a form, you can put the various different questions um, and, and you know, tick boxes and what have you that yeah. you need on there. Um, but you can make that form anonymous so that whilst yeah. you invite you know, a tag worth of your members or something like that to respond to the form, uh, when the when the person when the the, you know, the staff member within Church Suite is looking at the form responses as they come in, <clears throat> they don't see who those um, who those Names kind of are. voters yeah. are, if you like. Yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I, I know that that is um, that is well used. Um, yeah. And I guess for for governance, yeah, things like sending out meetings, um, you you can track all of that through the yeah. communication logs um, and things like that. Um, and then you know, wider than that people will um, set up a, a specific area on Google Drive or OneDrive um, mm -hmm. and then link to that from an external link in my church suite so that you know past minutes yeah. or uh, yeah. articles of documents um, people can see yeah yeah exactly all of that's yeah. there so yeah you you can definitely piece together those different things yeah um yeah within church suite to 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 help support that kind of a uh, an yeah. organizational structure yeah because I think I've met quite a few managers or, or even pastors who are actually don't have somebody in our role who are mm. like having to manage this going, I don't know how to do this. I, I'm concerned that if I don't get this out, this email out within two weeks and then, you know, I'm going to be you know pulled up and somebody saying, mm. add it. how do I make sure that I've, you know, proven that I have shown the email did go and, you know, people did receive it, but maybe it's been lost in junk or whatever. So there's all those things that, that keep pastors up at night. And I'm like, yeah, okay, here we go. 30 odd pounds a month. You can pay for this software that yeah. is going to relieve that burden. And, and, and I guess we haven't covered that, but it does, it does relieve burden for people who are in mm. ministry, who may be having to manage this. And if you're, a, if you're a pastor listening to this, um, this this is a tool for you as much as it is for people who are administrators um, and you know you might need some further support to help to get it up and running and to get it running in the way that, that would serve your church but but it is going to serve you hugely and um, so worth thinking about in terms of that governance stuff and um, mate I noticed on the website you have a new funky updated website mm, very we do yeah that. The, the first image almost looks kind of 3D. It almost feels like it's coming off on the page of me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I love it. It's great. Yeah, we've been on a bit of a journey um, over the last probably 18 months of just trying to um, trying to reevaluate. Uh, it, it does our marketing kind of material tell yeah. a, a true story of who we are? Because yeah. we are such a product-focused company. Um, unashamedly like we love our products I mean, that is where that is where the rubber hits the ground yeah and and we you know we're really supporting ministry um, and so there's always a tendency for us to focus more on the product than on like the website or you know, yeah. the social media and all those kind of things but at the same time um we were beginning to feel a little bit of a sense of like, actually are we by what our website looks like and things like that perhaps not doing as good a job of, of showcasing the products and actually we are a dynamic company we yeah. are uh kind of we're ex we're so excited by what we do um, and i think that with the updates in color scheme and uh kind of the dynamism yeah. of, of the website i think it just does a better job of showing um like we want to play an active part in supporting yeah. the role of, of church ministry um, and I, I, for me I, when i look at it i just i just smile when i look at the website now i'm like yes this is this is this does, is modern this is fresh it's clean this is better reflect yeah. you guys definitely yeah i yeah. i when i saw it and went through it i was like this is great this captures who you guys are in a much better way than than the old site and mm. um, you know i do love it and 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 there's the the level of details as you go through the pages and i was watching you on a short video with your your green top on just oh yeah into one of the details <laughs> with the church street branding on i loved it and and so it it, it is great and um yeah if you've not been on church street site for a while or you've not been at all then then listeners please go out and check out um the website and take a look at the new new features on there which is tell you what Gav, for, for anyone who is listening to this um if they want us to send them some church suites because you know we might be called church Ooh. suite but we've also we've also got some at the minute in the office <laughs> some some rock um 
uh, you know, like mint, mint, yeah, yes, rock, yes. Uh, that we found a company that could put the Church Suite logo in it, oh, and it really. says Church Suite around the outside. So, um, you, yeah, you're moving any, into some branding now, and, and uh, well, mate, and, uh, anyone, anyone who's listening who wants some Church Suites, they just need to email our support team, and we'll be more than happy to to post them out some Church Suites. How about that? All right. Well, maybe the first ten people that email Gav at Church Suite, yeah. Some rock is available for you, mate. Love that. Support at churchsuite.com. There you go. Support and that's church S U I T E, not um, not church suite, not S W E T. Yeah, S U I T dot com. There we go. <laughs> so you've got plenty of rock. I love that. You're gonna have you you have you got like branded mugs and things like that. What else have you got that you've branded up yet? Nothing. Is this no, just... no, very, very little. No, it was just a um it, it's it's a it's a balance isn't it in all of these things like <laughs> trying to find how can we be playful and fun and remain true yeah. to who we are but also you never want to spend money frivolously yeah um, and you don't you don't just want to like oh let's just yeah, do all the different things so yeah. um no we, we actually have very very little um branded anything <laughs> i think i think the uh the rock and uh, maybe some little tins of meat, mints uh, yeah. some encouragements we call them okay um, that's a that's a big win now, in terms of um, culture, when I first met, one of the things that impacted me in first going to your offices was all the, the uh, what are they, the party poppers. Oh, yeah. Somebody joined and you were talking about some of the fun of like throwing them in. And what are some of the other fun things that are happening behind the scenes that you've used kind of in your staff culture stuff? Fill me in. Yeah. I haven't prepped you on this, have I? But yeah, interesting. Um, well, I mean, so we we get together the whole company once a quarter um, because uh, there's we're kind of about fifty percent of the team are in Nottingham, and then fifty percent work remotely across the UK and um, and Europe. Um, and so, um, yes, we get together, and we always try and make sure that those days are, are kind of relational and fun because actually we you, you know you produce your best work when you know who you're working with and you and you enjoy being with them so um just at our last uh quarterly day the icebreaker that we had together was um that you had to oh it was it, because it was the summer theme uh you had to make a sunday an ice cream sunday um sweet. of which um but then one of the it was so Lydia, who who uh, who came up with it, uh, just uh, just an incredible job of, uh, of all of our different icebreakers. But it was it was judged by me, so they were broken down into six different teams of three <laughs> or four people or whatever it was, and um, and they had to create this uh, this ice cream sundae that was judged on um, on appearance, height, taste, height, um, <laughs> hate, taste, something else, and then and then the final one was je ne sais quoi. <laughs> and so just that, just that little bit of a let's just throw it throw something yeah. in there um and it, yeah that had we had so much hilarity whilst, whilst yeah, doing that some people are just like properly going for how can we make a sunday as tall as possible others yeah. were, were like doing it <laughs> themed on um like the church suite logo and a bug being squashed by the church suite logo it just <laughs> like a software bug just to yeah. clarify yeah um but you know it's it, i think it's some of those things if um we want to communicate well, but we also want to, yeah. we want to try and have fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, so just little things that that we can um, as and when. And and I think also just trying to make sure that we're looking out for our team as much as yeah. possible um, yeah. with uh, with things like cost of living and um, and all those different things. Uh, we we do we do our best and there's always more that that we can do yeah, yeah. no doubt like sometimes we've got it better than than others um but just trying to th- trying to stay um close to the ground and, and thinking okay actually we, we've got everyone coming together um this time you know when when all of the fuel bills were really um like we had that, that massive spike in them um we uh we bought um like big thick hoodies and and what have you for the team <laughs> and um and and like Working electric home, hand that. Yeah, Love that. yeah those kind of things of actually yeah it, it might it might cost you um yeah. to uh to be running all this extra heating and things like that but but maybe we can contribute and then you know yeah. more recently you know coming to christmas we um we gave everyone like a, a marks and spencer voucher or a tesco voucher so they could they you know, could buy some nice food and stuff like that yeah, for their yeah. family and yeah um people have babies and we'll buy them um some uh, I don't know if you've come across Cook, the um, like the frozen foods. Come, oh, that's no. brilliant. Go to 
Oh, go and, go and search cook foods. Uh, it's like delicious, really lovely um, frozen meals. But when right. someone's just had a baby, um, you know, for us as a company to you know buy them fifty pounds of um, frozen meals that they can just have in and be like, oh, it's a terrible night, can't be bothered to cook. Let's oh, we'll get the cooker. We're just trying to yeah, work yeah, out yeah. how can we. Sometimes it's little touches, I think, yeah. that um, yeah. that that actually make a real difference. But any ways that we can demonstrate that we genuinely yeah. care for our team. Um, we, yeah. we try and we try and build that in as a regular part of our culture um and and people really appreciate it so yeah. um yeah i think it's great mate every time i interact with staff or you know when i came to visit you know you just there, there is there you are creating a culture which you know is for me what i want to try and create with our team you know mm. and you know before we chatted about um patrick lencioni's book didn't we just in terms of that mm. Hiring the right person, getting the right people on the team is so important, isn't it? To then, you know, doing this secondary thing that we're talking about is how do we care for them? How do we bless them? How do we encourage them in what they're doing? Um, you, you love that book, didn't you? The Ideal Team Player, Patrick yeah. Lanzaroni. Should, should we finish a little bit on chatting about that? Because I think listeners will be interested in this as well. Um, yeah. He's got three points, hasn't he? Uh, take us through those. Yeah. So um, so the Ideal Team Player um he would he would wrap up as saying it's someone who is humble yeah someone who is hungry and someone who is smart yeah um and so um when you're starting to think about you know is someone humble um well the opposite of humility is pride and the the proud person wants to take all the credit credit for themselves uh, they don't really leave room for other people um the humble person actually it, it is prepared to be that team player yeah. um and so uh, just trying to work out, OK, where is someone on that scale? Because, you know, we're all on that scale um, yeah. and sometimes we're leaning more towards one side than the other. Yeah. Um, but but what we're looking for is trying to work out how can we um, <clears throat> how can we work out where on that scale someone is? Because you certainly mm. want someone who is who is leaning towards um, humility and, and seeking that as as who they want to be. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, humility, that's that's one of the things <clears throat> huge, huge part of it. Yeah. Um, hungry um is the second one um and that is um is really about you know what is that inner drive within a person um mm -hmm. the the opposite of hungry would be apathetic um yeah. and, and and we all know that it is um it's impossible to give someone who is apathetic a drive for their work yeah um yeah. It, that yeah. is one of the most that's one of the most difficult things i'm sure yeah. there are all sorts of people listening to this he'll be like uh oh, i've worked with someone who it just felt like they didn't care. And no matter how, how I tried to paint the picture, no matter mm -hmm. what motivational language I put around it, I just couldn't get yeah. what I need from them. And, and so trying to work out, okay, how, how can we find someone who is hungry? I mean, the, the downside of hunger is that um, ambition and, um, and too much drive mm -hmm. can actually, you know, workaholism. I, you know, I see that in myself. That's something I really need to watch out for. Um, yeah you know those are unhealthy patterns and that that doesn't fit into a deep relationship with jesus he does not want us to be exhausted yeah. he wants us to seek rest and find rest in him so yeah. trying to you know where where is someone on that yeah. um that hungry scale um and then smart is not necessarily um completely about intelligence um there are definitely some roles where actually you do need big brains in there you yeah. don't want yeah. someone who does not have a high level of um, education and understanding running the church suite infrastructure in our service. You, you know, there is a, there is an intelligence yeah. smart level that we need there, <laughs> but more than that, it's about being people smart. Yeah. You know, can the, can this person read the room? Um, do they understand how their words are being received by others? Are they capable of adapting what they're saying for different audiences and things like that? Um, and so if you can find someone who is humble, who is hungry, who is smart, um, then actually like that, that person, that person is gold. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I, I, I wholeheartedly yeah. endorse um, Patrick Lencioni's book, The Ideal Team Player. I, I find it. Um, yeah, it's it, compelling, it's, it's isn't such, it? It really is. Yeah. It really is. Absolutely. And challenging as well. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. because when I read it, I then reflect on it like, oh, where where am I right now? I want to be humble. I yeah. want to be hungry and I want to be smart. But yeah. actually, where right now am I mm. am I lacking? And what can I do 
to, you know, before God, surrender whatever it is that is kind of pulling me in the wrong direction. Um, and, and and so that I can step into you know, doing what he has made me yeah. to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to become a, a limiting factor in that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's helpful, isn't it? Because we can when we come to recruitment stuff, we can go down the kind of the role, the job description, the competencies. But actually in church ministry and, and you know, certainly in companies as well the person if you can find the right person who who fits those kind of character qualities of you know humility uh, there's a self-drive there's a hunger to work there's a passion for what they love and they do um but at the same time there's a smartness about how they work it, it just doesn't go wrong does it when you've got some of those ingredients i think about some of the team you know with us they they love the church they love the gospel and they're hungry to work. They're, there's a humility about them because they love the gospel. They understand the gospel. Um, and and it's a joy, isn't it? Because you can always upskill people. You can always help train people better. But it's harder on those other elements. And and Patrick's yeah. got some great stuff in there. Of just if what what if one of those three are missing, mm. how challenging it can be to move somebody forward. And you Absolutely. really, it's so easy to get sucked into, but actually they're going to do a good job because they're, it feels like they've got skills that meet this job description, but yet they're not a team player. And um, there's some... And, fast- and when you're, yeah, when you're in that place of, I've got such a need right now because I've got such a hole in my team. Yeah. I just need someone. But actually, if you get the wrong person, yeah, you can set yourself back. And, and it's really, really difficult when you're in that place um to to hold on to the 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 principles of actually no the, i can see that this person yeah. is lacking in people smart yeah and and actually i could appoint them and it would solve some of my problems yeah. but actually i'm going to end up cleaning up a mess both for them and for others later yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah it is it, it, it i mean hiring is hard it's just hard it is tough isn't it it really is tough because you, you know what you get presented with is not always the the, the case is it that, that was behind yeah. the scenes and and that's the, the the hard thing and it's and it's even more brutal in the church when somebody's a church member mm-hmm. and when these things go wrong they they are they are tough and i'm sure everyone who's listening to the podcast has had an experience where they've mm-hmm. had to you know bring someone to a point where they, they're asking them to to finish a role um and those are those are challenging things to work through so getting yeah. stuff right at the start of actually let's be people focused and and think about these people things rather than just the task um would be a you know really useful but yeah take a look at the book and 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 mm. have look at it but it's yeah i think that's another podcast isn't it recruitment is a is another whole area to chat about um but maybe so. this is great it's great to spend time with you bird uh, you, you've got such wisdom and uh we really appreciate this this partnership and this sponsorship together and um if you've if you're listening today and you've not come across church suite and this is the first time you've heard about it then please go and check out their website get in contact with them look for a free trial there's so much stuff um, that we would recommend here uh churches all over the country are using this and now into australia as well i saw the little drop down tab on the website and i'm looking forward to seeing countries added gav as <laughs> continues to bless what you're doing at church suite I'm, I'm looking forward to that absolutely well i mean the, the crazy thing is that, that our software is used by uh the, i think there's more than 40 countries yeah. um that the yeah, that church suite gets used it is mind-blowing um yeah no, it's, it, it's, it is amazing it's awesome. it? yeah like god's grace at work and and it's just it is incredible that the idea you know when you were working alongside a pastor in your church developing this to where it is now it's just remarkable grace, isn't it? And um, absolutely, and and God's used you and your gifting to to bless the whole church, a wider church, and your kingdom mindset is provoking, and um, yeah, and how we can serve other churches is is wonderful. Well, Gavin, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for all your support, no mate. It's great to chat, and um, yeah, we'll see you next time on the podcast. Bless you. Awesome. Thanks so much. <laughs>